We are going to jump into our Bible class now. This is the ninth and 10th commandments on coveting. We get to ask a few questions, though, of course. Let's talk about our quickie quiz here. Number one, coveting is wanting something new. True or false? What do you think? Some of you are not sure. Looks like Audrey's got thumbs up. Yeah, I'm going to say no. That's not coveting. There's nothing wrong with wanting something new. In fact, sometimes I'm forced to wear new things against my will because my wife loves me. Next, two, coveting is wanting something that doesn't belong to you. I'm going to say this is also false because what if I want to buy your boat and I offer you money for your boat and then you say sure and then you sell me your boat. Is that, was that wrong? No, that's okay. We're going to narrow it down even more. Coveting is wanting something that doesn't belong to you that you can't or shouldn't have. Yes, that's true. Coveting is, in fact, wanting something that doesn't belong to you that you cannot or should not have. Where God has said, like, I can't look at another woman and go, man, I wish that was my wife. I've never done that because my wife is gorgeous and I love her profusely. But that would be one example. Or I should have said dog. You should not try to take someone else's dog. That, that would have been far more appropriate. Because some people probably look at my dog and say, man, I wish I could. Anyway, I'll stop. And last one, I think there's one more if my clicker stays together. Four, God is more concerned about our actions than he is our thoughts. What do you think? The sound desk says that's false. Oh, yeah, that's false. God is worried about your thoughts. Just as worried about your thoughts as, you, as your actions, which is hard. All right, this is the ninth commandment and the tenth commandment. And just a word, my first year or so here, I made the mistake of asking the congregation, you know what the fifth commandment is, right? And there are people who grew up in a Baptist background, Baptist, Pentecostal, evangelical background, numbers the commandments differently than if you grew up uh, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Catholic, that side of Christianity. And if you go back into Genesis... It looks, see, we split up the ninth and 10th commandments, whereas in the front end, if you look at, sorry, not Genesis, Exodus, if you look at Exodus, the commandments are split up, you shall have no other gods, and then you shouldn't have any graven images. We plop that into one. And the Western church has historically split up the coveting into people and things. So that's why. So you've got to be careful, Lutherans when you go out and just sling around the fifth commandment because some Baptists think you're talking about sex when you think you're talking about murder. So, watch yourself, okay? It doesn't necessarily help your Christian witness. I've, I've, that's just not, just talk about murder or sex. Don't talk about the fifth or sixth commandment. All right. So, let's, let's read. The ninth commandment, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. What does this mean? We should fear and love God that we do not scheme to get our neighbor's inheritance or house or obtain it by show of right, but do all we can to help him keep it. So that's things, and now people. You should not treat your neighbor's wife, workers, dogs, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. What does this mean? We should fear and love God that we do not force or entice our neighbor's spouse, workers, or animals, but urge them to stay and do their duty. Okay? That is the breakdown in coveting. So let's see what this is. This is a more fleshed-out definition of coveting, because who uses that every day? Nobody. Evil lust. Okay? Evil. Wanting something that doesn't belong to you, never being satisfied with what you have, never having a, having a never-ending desire for more. And again, I would even clarify that second one. Wanting something that doesn't belong to you and that you should not have. Because it's not wrong for you to say, hey, can I buy your car? Because I might say, yeah, of course you can buy my car. I want to sell it anyway. I'm just kidding. But you see where I'm going with this. All right, number one. What's the difference between the ninth and tenth commandment? We kind of touched on this, but just in case you're not clear, what's the left one? That's my dog when he was cute, okay? And that is my daughter's iPhone, okay? Either one of those things, if you want them and you shouldn't have them, like you don't have the money to spend on it, or if my dog's not for sale, it's wrong for you to try to kidnap my dog. Okay, you're getting the point. Two. What truth about the weight of sinful thoughts does God stress by giving us two commandments that address coveting 
Why is this truth difficult for people to accept? And hear Romans 7, 18. I hope. Okay. The sound disc is struggling, that's okay. I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. This picture right here is Minority Report. It is an awesome movie that comes up every time I teach confirmation. They were the literal thought police. They had stopped all murder in the nation because they could. They could know when someone was about to kill someone, get there, and stop the murder, and then throw them in jail for almost murdering somebody. <laughs> yeah. So it's real. Imagine if you could stop the thoughts, you would have no more, well, looting. You, you, could, do, you could stop all this stuff. If you, I mean, it's terrifying to think if someone could see your thoughts, right? But God can. So, yeah. And number three, what can be our attitude when we see our neighbor prosper and succeed in finding happiness in his business and family, and, and family life? What's that terrible, I suppose there's a couple different words. I'm thinking of the one that starts with a J, ends with a Y, and has Ellis in the middle. Jealousy, yes. Jealousy, envy, that was the other one. That would have been a little bit harder to spell out for you, I suppose. Yeah, jealousy's bad. Yeah, if it, be, know that all that you have, it's, it, like I say, it's okay to want something that someone else has and to go buy it. I mean, that's not wrong. But there's a, there's a fine line, isn't there? I think all of us would admit that there's a danger in that. And um, one of the things that doesn't really come up that I struggled with was gift envy or jealousy. Meaning there are other pastors who are way better preachers, who are way better scholars, who are way be- you know, that's not helpful. Because it just cripples you. Instead, God says, be faithful with who you are, Fred. I made you, you're amazing. Go be it. Might somebody be better than you? If they have more gifts, God be praised. But yeah, so as you look at other people, don't, don't let that be a problem either. It doesn't help. Four, can you think of an example in the Bible where coveting got somebody into deep spiritual trouble? There's a lot. I have one that I'm going to click here in a second, but can you think of one? David and Bathsheba, Jenna, did you cheat? Did you look at the slides? <laughs> she gave me the look of, that's ridiculous. Yeah, is the sound desk ready? Yes. The man said, Isn't this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Yeah, that's King David's servant who tried to be his conscience, because uh, since he obviously didn't have one at that point. Buddy, that's a bad idea. You can't do that. He did it anyway and had all kinds of problems. David was a lousy father, a terrible husband, and a man after God's own heart. Because he understood what it meant to be forgiven, and he understood grace. The the Bible's not shy about the sins of the patriarchs. There's all kinds of sin that gets recorded that we don't necessarily read in our lessons. And uh, that's some of the things we're going through on a Thursday morning Bible study, which is incredible. It's stories they didn't teach in Sunday school. So, Yeah. Five, agree or disagree, it's wrong to offer a person more money so that he will leave his present employer and come to work for you. What do you think? Luke, what happened at the Chick-fil-A? About a year ago, what was going down? Was the one operator at the Chick-fil-A offering employees at other Chick-fil-A's a dollar more an hour? Yeah, um, Stephanie Gregory just walked out, but her business faced that. Their um, employees are being enticed away by other people who are offering them a dollar more an hour. Is that right? It sounds underhanded to me. I think it's a fine line, isn't it? At some point, if I think you're a good worker, my, my brother's are both nerds, they're in the IT profession, and they have headhunters call them up and say, I'm going to give you this, this, this if you come work for this company. The headhunter, of course, gets a commission. That's not uncommon in our society. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think some companies may not understand what they're happening when they say, I need a worker, can you go find one for me? 
And those are the tactics that are used. I, I can't say that's helping them to stay and do their duty. Um, yeah, that, that's a tough one that I might have a hard time with. So I'd say just be, be careful. Just because it might be shrewd business practice doesn't mean necessarily that that's what God wants. That's tough. Five, what's the best cure for coveting? Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. Yeah. Is it blue PJs? No. It is not blue PJs. Is it, in fact, contentment? That baby looks pretty happy, doesn't he? And yet, I don't think he has any means of income yet. Um, I, I, I think he's probably well fed. He's got a dry diaper on, but... Yeah, it's, it is contentment. That is, that, is the, that is the cure. How did Jesus save us from our sins of coveting, from all other sins? What did he do perfectly that you can't? Did he ever covet? No. That was a temptation, of course. But Jesus passed all of those perfectly. He was obedient for you. Luther said, this is the shortest passage you're ever going to hear from Luther, he is a rich man who is content. Any questions at all on coveting otherwise? Say this prayer with me. Lord God, every day we battle sinful and covetous thoughts. Strengthen us by your word so that our thoughts as well as our words and action might be pleasing to you. Help us live as people who have been truly redeemed by the blood of your Son. In his name we ask this. Amen. The final announcement is that if you are watching with us online, please do leave uh, something in the chat so we can encourage each other and know that we are not alone, even if you are just worshiping alone in your home. We are together as a congregation and, of course, the Holy Christian Church. And so know that that comfort is there with you and that you are here in spirit with us uh, even as we gather and you are not here, unfortunately. That's okay. Staying home is a great option again. May God give you all a blessed week. There was a time that I swore I would never go back.